It's a beautiful day for a tiger. School's a beautiful day for a tiger. This is your time. A wonderful time. It's a terrific day for terrific kids. A terrific day for all tigers. This is your time. A wonderful time. We have always wanted to have students just like you. We've always wanted to do our best just for you. So let's make the most of these at-home days. We can't be together, might as well say, this is your time, a wonderful time, just to be a tiger. Please won't you be, won't you be a tiger? Well, hello kids, Dr. Glass here. It is a wonderful day to be a tiger. And boy, do we have a wonderful show for you today. Let's ask our friend, Mr. Tiger. Oh, Mr. Tiger, Mr. Tiger. Well, hello, Dr. Glass. Boy, do we have a great show for the kids today. Today, we're gonna learn how to cook and we're gonna have so much fun making things. And we're gonna learn about so many new and wonderful things today. It's gonna be a fantastic and wonderful show. Sounds great. Now, on with the show. Hi, I'm Laura. Hi, I'm Peyton. Today, we're gonna teach you how to do stop motion with the free version of Stop Motion App. You can get cardboard, which you probably all can do, and cut out the cardboard and draw some figures on there and make a stop motion video. For stop motion and innovation, you will take a lot of pictures. You need to make sure you have a iPad or a phone in the spot where it won't move. After each picture, you'll move your characters just a little bit. Do your best to try to stay out of the picture. If you don't want to keep on taking a picture by yourself, you can put the timer on on the app. Play the pictures, it looks like your characters are moving. You can make up a story to go along with your video. This free version of your app will not let you make sound. You can tell others your story, or you can put in an iMovie to, t to have sound in your movie for free. Most importantly, have fun. Thanks for watching. Hope I see you soon. So today we're gonna look at design a stadium using Tinkercad. Tinkercad is a 3D modeling program that works right in your browser that's absolutely free and safe for students to use. And so I'm gonna go over here to download for 3D printing. 
um, you can get here by going to CT Learns slash Stadium Spark. So I'm going to click on Download for 3D Printing, and it's going to automatically open up. I'm going to click Sign In under Already Have an Account, and then Sign In Using Social Providers. Your students can log in using Google. I'm going to click on Copy and Tinker. And so the whole premise of this is we are going to learn how to play around with Tinkercad and use these pieces, these pre-made pieces for us, to build a stadium. And so just a couple of instructions. If you click on each one of these pieces, you can move them around in space. But you see they also have these controls. And so the cone at the top allows you to make it taller, or actually pull it up in space, give it higher altitude. And if you watch there, I'm looking to get at zero, which is back on the ground. I can stretch the size of this by using the four white corners at the bottom. You can always go back to resize it. And I can actually make this taller by pulling the top square. And so if I want to rotate it, we have these different arrows. And as you see, I can rotate these either at set ranges or I can pull it out here and get a little bit more precise. All right, so uh, all of these work exactly the same way. They have all of the same controls. And so uh, let's see what we can come up with. To make a copy, you can click on copy and then paste. It's gonna throw it somewhere out there. Now, to make copies of things and to, to group this together, because really what I want to do is double this and just flip it around. If you hold the shift key down, you can select just the pieces that you want. And then when you're finished, you can let go. And then I'm going to make a copy and paste. Oh, I missed one. So let's try that again. Holding down shift, holding down shift. So holding down shift. All right, now let's try that again. Copy and paste. There we go. And so now I can rotate it. Since this is symmetrical, theoretically, this should all just relatively fit together. So let's see from the top. Looks like I need to go. You can use the arrow keys also to move pieces. And that's that's pretty symmetrical, pretty, pretty close. And so there's my the base of my stadium. You can also click and choose uh, which how many degrees to turn. You can still use Control V. And 
Control C for copy and paste. Now, one thing you can also do is group. I'm going to use a lot of these girders, and so I'm going to group these together. And now it's one big piece. And so now when I copy, it's going to be exactly the same. Okay. Now we'll be reusing that, but I wanted to bring the rafters over here just to show. kind of how these all work together. Now, over here on the right-hand side, we have all sorts of shapes. And so, um, I'm just going to use a, we have, I mean, we could use for this roof, we could use uh, a box, we could use the roof uh, shape here, uh, could go rounded roof, all sorts of options. Uh, but since mine is more of a rectangle, I'm going to use this simple box and we're just going to reshape this simple box and you can change colors uh, to whatever you want. And I can come in here and see where I messed up. So, you can see that this raised, the action of raising that, raised that too high up. And same with the bottom. And so, what's great about Tinkercad and about uh, this is that, uh, you know, we could, we could export this out and send it to a 3D printer or we have, you know, if you want to do a laser cut or something like that, um, all sorts of different options. And, oh, I just thought of one to show you. And so I was thinking about what if we had wanted to have a hole in this. And then I can hold select and group these two together and now I've got a, a hole and as you can see some sun inside of my stadium. Tinkercad is absolutely free to use and it's so much fun to play with. Allows you to make mistakes and allows you to fix your mistakes. But what a fun thing to do with Tinkercad, create your own stadium virtually. Good morning, Tiger friends. My name is Mrs. Fisher and I have some friends with me today. This is Quincy Callis and Perry Callis, and this is Bella. And today we are filming our cooking segment on the porch because it's a beautiful day and this is something that you can do outdoors. Today we're going to be making an herb garden. We're going to tell you all about the things that you will need 
and how you can put your herb garden together and you can include that into your family cookbook. The things that you will need for your herb garden are here on the table. I didn't have a spray bottle inside the house, so I picked something that would work just as good. You probably have this in your cabinet. It's just a measuring cup that you can put some water in. You're going to need six eggs. There's a dozen in here, but you'll just need six depending on um, how many herb gardens you want to make. You'll need some potting soil and some spoons that you can use to um, put your potting soil into the eggs. You'll need a bowl that you can put the eggs in, put a lid on and save them for later if you wanna make scrambled eggs. You'll also need some paper. And if you have popsicle sticks at home, you can use that. This is gonna to be to label your herbs. I didn't have any popsicle sticks, so I just went to one of my trees and I grabbed some sticks and you will be able to use that to label them and stick in the herb garden. I was also out of scotch tape and I needed something to attach these. So I had some little clips that I'm gonna use that were just in my craft drawer. And then last, you will need some herbs. Do you guys know what herbs are? Yeah. Do you know what they but are? I have some popsicle sticks at home. You do. So you could borrow some from your neighbors if you wanted to do that. Did So do you guys know what herbs are? Yes. Okay. Well, herbs are like spices that you can use whenever you're cooking. So I bet your mom uses different spices when she cooks spaghetti or other fun dishes. She might use some herbs. And I picked some herbs that um, I thought would be fun to use. We have dill, lavender, and we have rosemary. So, I like the purple one. Isn't that the prettiest one? I think it is too. So those are what we will be planting today. The first thing that we want to do is we have to open up our eggs and crack the eggs. This is a super fun thing for kids to do. I know that you might be hesitant in letting them crack eggs if you um, haven't ever done that before, but I encourage you to let them try because it's a lot of fun for them. So we're gonna use six of the eggs today. And have you guys ever cracked eggs before? Yes. Yeah, so you know what to do? Yay, we have some professionals here. So we're gonna crack the egg first. We're gonna crack six of them. Very good, Terry. Very good. Now we're gonna take the eggshell and we're actually gonna set it right back in there. And we're gonna crack six of our eggs. You ready, Quincy? All right. What is that for? This water? This is to wipe our hands. Did you get some egg on your hands? Okay, go ahead and wipe your hands. This is a fun thing for kids to do. It works on their fine motor, also gives them experience in cracking the eggs. We do this in my kindergarten class. We do all kinds of cooking experiences and the kids really enjoy it. Cracking the eggs is one of their most fun things to do. Okay, so we have two eggs cracked. We need another one. We're gonna do a total of six eggs because we're going to use each eggshell for um, our herb garden. Quincy and Perry have gotten all of the eggs cracked. So Perry, can you put the lid on our eggs and we can use those later in the kitchen. We'll put them in the refrigerator and it'll be something you can use if you want to scramble eggs or something like that. You can still use the eggs. Thank you. You can set them right there. So we have six eggs that are cracked and we're going to take each eggshell that they've cracked in half and we're going to put a half on each side. So it will look like this. After we get the eggs on each side, you'll have 12 shells. And the shells will work as our pots for our herb garden. You want to hold it up and show them? So there we have the 12 eggshells now that we can use for our herb garden. We have our 12 eggshells that are each halves that are in our egg carton and we're ready to put our potting soil in there. So Quincy, I'm going to let you go first. You're just going to take a spoon of the potting soil and you're going to put it right inside the egg just like that. Don't put it on my head. Does he usually put it on your head? No. <laughs> okay, Perry, you want to put some in there too? Yes, you can use whichever one you would like to. Okay. So we'll continue this process until all of the eggshells have a little bit of dirt inside them. We use the lavender to plant within our four, first four eggshells. So now we're going to do the dill. We're gonna plant those in the next four and you can choose how many you wanna do. We just chose three today, but you can do a variety of them if you want. 
We also had some extra lavender left over. So to make sure that we actually have good seeds inside there, we added a few more just to make sure that they, they do grow. All right, let's do the dill seeds. Now these are a little bit bigger. So I'll put these on the shovel and you guys can put them inside these four eggshells. All right, this one right here. There you go. I can right here, see Quincy. It. They're tiny. See it, but I can still see it. Yeah. We'll have to put some more. You want to put them right here and here. These four. We'll have to put more soil over the top of them after we get all the seeds within there. Mm, I can't get some. You want to put some in this one? My hands are too tiny. They're too tiny. They're hard to get, aren't they? Our last herb to plant is rosemary and we actually put more dill in these other ones so we have two eggshells left that we're going to put rosemary in and you can do it however you want at home um you can plant as many of the seeds within the different eggshells that you want so we have two left that we're going to do let me pour these on here and then you guys can put the rosemary now these seeds are small like the lavender seeds okay so you can put seeds in those last two eggshells and then we'll have them all planted and we'll be ready to put some potting soil on the top. We have all of the seeds inside the eggshells and now we're ready to fill the top of them with the potting soil. So go ahead and put the potting soil on top. This like I put one on there. Yeah, we're going to do that to the rest of them. Let's see, you want to go ahead and put some on? We're going to cover the seed with the potting soil. That way the seeds um, don't get too wet. They're protected whenever we water them. We have the potting soil covered and now we're ready to label our herbs. What we have here are some papers and if you have a kindergartner, they can probably stretch out the words and write the um, sounds that they hear in the words on the label and then we'll be able to use it to put in here. If you have a, a child that needs some help with that, they can actually just copy what it says right here, copy the name of the herb, and um, they can use that as a resource. So Quincy is going to write Rosemary first. He's gonna use the herb package as a resource. And it's always fun to have your kids write and um, it just makes your herb garden more personalized. So now we have Perry, she's writing lavender so we can label our lavender herb. Our last herb is dill and Perry's gonna write dill for us. How many letters does it have in it, Perry? Four. Four letters. We have all of our herbs um, labeled on our papers and we're ready to put them onto the sticks. All right, so we have our labels on our sticks and we are ready to do the watering of the herbs. That'll be our last step. Are you ready to do that, guys? Our last step is watering. So I'm gonna move these right over here so we don't mess up their pretty writing that they did because sometimes the watering can get a little messy if we water too much. So I have just a little bit of water in here. I had more than this and I thought we probably better pour out some of it because sometimes it can, if you don't have good control, then we'll have too much water. So I'm gonna let you go ahead and water, Perry. Hold on to it. There you go, we're just gonna give it a little sprinkle. Nice work. Okay, hey, Quincy, you wanna do the next four? Okay, we're ready to put them in, guys. So go ahead and stick in our labels. You have one. I have one too. I remember the rosemary was the last two that we did. And now we have our herb garden complete. So our your herb garden, you can put inside your uh, windowsill. If you have a windowsill, you can have it on your porch. You'll just wanna make sure that if it's raining outside, you bring it in so it doesn't get too much rain. But let's check it out. This is your herb garden that you guys created. You can take oh, it home and watch thing. it grow. Okay. Did you have fun today? Uh, yeah. yeah. Tell them, say thank oh, you for watching. Thank you for watching. Yeah. Okay, bye. Hi. What have you been doing? I've just been coloring and doing some worksheets for homework. Been a little bored lately. Well, I just finished going on a field trip. It was so much fun. A field trip? How would you get to go on a field trip? We can't go anywhere. 
we have to stay home all of the time is what my mom says. There's a field trip that you can take virtually on your parents' cell phone. A tablet, like an iPad, or a computer. All you need is the QR code. Look down here. There's a QR code down here and you can go on a field trip with that. Wow, that sounds like fun to me. And it's this QR code down here underneath me? Yeah. Just ask your mom or dad or an adult for permission to scan the code. And then you will hear books read from all around the world. There are books from Ghana and Mexico and India, China, Vietnam. And then you get to return to the United States and hear a book from here. Wow, that's going to be really a lot of fun. I'm going to go home now to ask my mom to let me scan the QR code and go on this multicultural virtual field trip. I hope you will go on the field trip with us. Yeah, everybody needs to scan the QR code and we could all go on a field trip together. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It would be so much fun. I think so too. So ask your parents to scan this QR code with their cell phone, tablet, or computer so you can travel with us. See you on the field trip! Hello, I'm Andrea Strapp from Clifford Elementary and I'm back with my friend today, Vicki, at Lazy L Safari. We've invited some special guests to join us today. I hope you enjoy our adventure. My name is Officer Rubin and I'm the school resource officer for all five elementary schools in Cape Girardeau. Did you know the Cape Barren Goose is a large goose from Southern Australia? This species is named for Cape Barren Island where specimens were first sighted by European explorers. Their ability to drink salt or brackish water allows numbers of geese to remain on offshore islands all year round. They are one of the rarest of the world's geese. This bird feeds by grazing and rarely swims. The breeding areas are grassy islands off the Australian coast where the species nest on the grounds in colonies. It bears captivity well, quite readily breeding in confinement if large enough paddocks are provided. Did you know the laughing kookaburra is the largest of the kingfisher family? They are native to New Guinea and Australia. Unlike many kingfishers, the kookaburra does not eat fish. Instead, they hunt small mice, small mammals, insects, and lizards. They live in medium to dense woodland areas that are typically wet and cold. Did you know the mouflon sheep live in steep mountainous woods near tree lines? In winter, they migrate to lower altitudes. The males have large sickle-shaped horns, which are prized by trophy hunters. The ram's dominance is determined by his age and the size of his horns. They can stand three feet tall at the shoulder and will live 13 to 20 years in the wild. Did you know the eland is one of the largest antelopes in the world? They are found mostly in the east and southern African savannas and plains. Both male and female eland have horns that rise with a slight twist back from the head to sharp points. The horns of the male are larger and have more distinct ridges than the female. Their diet in their native homeland consists of leaves and herbs, but they also consume fruits, seeds, and green grass. Did you know the Patagonian cavy is largely herbivorous, somewhat rabbit-like animal found in open and semi-open habitats in Argentina? It is actually a rodent. Active during the day, this species spends long periods basking in the sun, either resting on its haunches or with its front limbs folded under its body like a cat. Hi all, my name is Katie Gillum and I'm a third grade teacher at Clifford. Did you know that the male NEM peafowl is commonly known as a peacock? In 1963, the peacock was declared the national bird of India because of its rich, religious, and legendary involvement in Indian traditions. Peacocks do not develop their long trains until they are three years old. The train itself is composed of 100 to 150 upper tail culverts that are supported by 20 tail feathers. Each feather is tipped with an iridescent eye spot and is ringed with blue and bronze. Only the male sports the long tail feathers. Although they can fly strongly for short distances, they are terrestrial and roost at night. Did you know the black carousel is also known as the smooth-billed carousel 
and the crested curassow can be found in humid forest northern South American countries such as Colombia, Venezuela, the Guineas, and far northern Brazil. The curassow is a ground-dwelling bird and it lives in the undergrowth in the low forests and plantations and in riverside thickets. Did you know that there is a small breed of domestic pig from New Zealand? They have a docile or friendly nature and are now often kept as pets. The native people of New Zealand named them the kunikuni, meaning fat and round. They are covered in hair which can be long or short or straight and curly. Their hair colors can include black, brown, ginger, gold, cream, and spotted combinations. They stand about 24 inches tall and weigh about 130 to 140 pounds. The natural habitat of kunikuni is woodland and pasture. They thrive in the outdoors and they are easy to manage and are only true grazing pigs. Hi friends, I'm Stephanie Ellinger, one of the parent educators with the Cape Parents' as Teachers program. Did you know the East African Crown Crane is native to the Congo, through Uganda to Kenya, and Eastern South Africa? They prefer rivers and lakes with nearby grasslands and cultivated land. These cranes have a very general, omnivorous diet. They are known to eat insects, seeds, and small animals such as lizards. Did you know the alpaca is a domesticated species of South American camelid? It resembles a small llama in appearance. Alpacas were not bred to be a pack animal, but were bred specifically for their fiber. Alpaca fiber is used for making knitted and woven items similar to wool. Alpacas generally eat hay or grasses, but can eat other plants. Hey everybody, I'm Mrs. Patton Gill, and I am a teacher at Blanchard Elementary School. Did you know the American badger prefers open grasslands with prey and loose soil? The badger is a small black, gray, and white animal that is noted for its short legs and wide body. Their shorter legs are beneficial for digging underground shelters. Nocturnal in nature, badgers will spend much of the day resting in their dens or shaded areas. The badger is a carnivore that feeds on small mammals, squirrels, rabbits, mice, and prairie dogs. They have a lifespan in the wild of 14 years and can weigh up to 25 pounds. Did you know the ibex is a species of wild goat that tends to live in steep, rough terrain in the mountains of the European Alps? It is an excellent climber and its preferred habitat is the rocky region along the snow line above alpine forests. Males stay up on the rock cliffs during the day, whereas females stay below in the rolling slopes and brushy areas. At night, they will all move down into the forest for the night to feed. In the wild, the ibex goat's diet consists of grasses, a mixture of moss, flowers, leaves, and twigs. Hi, I'm Vicki with Lazy El Safari, and I want to introduce you to my new friend. This is Jerry. Jerry is a green wing macaw. Can you give kisses to everybody today, Jerry? Give kisses. Did you know, green wing macaws are the second largest parrots next to the hyacinth macaw. They are often mistaken for scarlet macaws due to their general red appearance. They also have characteristic red lines around the eyes formed by rows of tiny feathers on the otherwise bare white skin patch. This is one of the biggest differences from a scarlet macaw. They are found in forests and woodlands of northern and central South America. They can live to be over 60 years old. Many macaw parrots mimic human speech and they will want to vocalize by mimicking whistles and household noises or by speaking words. Follow Jerry and I, we're gonna go show you some other birds here at the Lazy L. Come on Jerry, step up. Did you know the Indian Rose Ring Parakeet originates from the southern Indian subcontinent and has feral and naturalized populations worldwide? In Australia, Great Britain, mainly around London, the United States, and other Western countries, it is often referred to as the Indian Ring Neck Parrot. Both males and females have the ability to mimic human speech. First, the bird listens to its surroundings and then it copies the voice of the human speaker. In the wild, this is a noisy species with an unmistakable squawking call. As a popular pet species, escape birds have colonized a number of cities around the world, including Northern and Western Europe. Did you know? The Cotamundi, commonly referred to as a Cody, sometimes pronounced Quatamundi, includes four different species, of which two, the ring-tailed Cody and mountain Cody, are found in South America, and the other two, the white-nosed Cody and Cozumel Island Cody, are found in Mexico. The mountain Cotamundi is a Central or South American raccoon and inhabits the Andes Mountain Range in Western South America. The mountain Cody is also the smallest species of Cody. Color variations are many shades of tans, browns, and grays. The Cody is a nocturnal omnivorous animal, meaning that the Cody eats both plants and animals during the darkness of night. 
Did you know that Cody's can make good pets? Cody's can be very affectionate and loving pets. They are puppy-like when young and can be a handful. They require large enclosure and lots of playtime. <laughs> It's Mrs. John here. I just came up with a fun little activity for you to do at home. All you need is a plate, borrow some shaving cream, some food coloring, a ruler or a knife if you've got it, paper, and a fork or a toothpick. So what you do is you take some shaving cream, put it in your plate, then take your food coloring. I'm gonna take some red and put a drop here wherever you'd like, or two, and I'm gonna take some yellow. And then take your toothpick or your fork, I have a plastic one, and make you a fun design in the shaving cream. But don't go too deep. Then what you do is take your paper and lay it on top. Kind of gently mat it so you can see the color through your paper. Pull it off. And if there's excess shaving cream, that's what your ruler and knife's for, to wipe it off and then you have a fun design on top of your paper. You can cut it out, you can use it as a bookmark, you can do it whatever you'd like to put it. Then if you wanna reuse your shaving cream, just scrape off your color and do some more and you can get a couple uses out of each one. Hope you guys enjoy this fun project. See you soon. Boys and girls, my name is Mrs. Fisher and I teach kindergarten at Blanchard Elementary. Today, I am on here to encourage you all to make your own family cookbook. When my kids were little, we created this family cookbook together and we still use it today. So in the cookbook, you can have recipes that maybe your, um, this one my, their grandmother added. This is one that I added and this is a recipe that one of my kids added and so on. So this recipe book is a treasure to our family. It's something that we still use today and I think that it would be a great idea for your family to make one as well. So once you have your recipe book created, I want you all to work together to write out your own recipe to put inside the book. Today, what we're going to make, or what I'm going to show you how to make, is monkey bread. It's one of my kids' favorites, and we've also made it in kindergarten, and it's a lot of fun to make. So as you can see here, these are the ingredients that you're going to need to make your monkey bread. You're going to need a four pack of biscuits, the small biscuits. You're going to need sugar, brown sugar, cinnamon, butter, a bunt pan if you have one. If you don't have one, you could also use any other type of baking dish to put it in. And some non-stick uh, non cooking spray, as well as a bag for you to be able to um, shake up your biscuits in. Okay, so before you begin, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees. You'll wanna have your parents help you do this too. And then you can, I've already, preset my oven so it's warming up while I'm preparing the biscuits. This is a super fun activity that you can do on your with big kids or little kids and if you have little kids, um, working together makes it a lot of fun. It's a fun experience. So you're gonna wanna unwrap your first um, can of biscuits and this part your child can do with you watching and you'll want to cut each one of the biscuits in half. You can give them a butter knife to use um, and you can show them how to slice the biscuits in half. You can also talk about fractions whenever you're doing um, the cooking with the biscuits and talk about how two parts make a whole, all different types of things that you can do um, whenever you're cooking. So after you get all of the first can of biscuits cut, you'll go ahead and open up the other three cans of biscuits and you'll do the same thing. Okay, so my helper, my daughter Haley, helped me cut out all, cut up all of the biscuits so they're ready to go. You can tell there are a bunch of biscuits on here. If you wanted to do a monkey bread recipe with half of them and you didn't want to fill an entire bundt cake, you could always do a smaller recipe of this too. But for this recipe, we're going to use a half a cup of brown sugar and a half a cup of um, white sugar. So we're gonna pour both of those inside the bowl and you wanna make sure your brown sugar is packed in there and then one teaspoon of cinnamon. 
which I have here. So we're going to mix that all up too. Then we're going to take a spoon or a fork and we're just going to mix up the brown sugar and the white sugar and the cinnamon. Okay, so earlier I had told you to get a small sandwich bag, and that's if you have several kids in your family, more than one, two or three kids that you want to take turns mixing up the biscuits with the um, cinnamon and sugar and brown sugar mix. So this is your choice. You can either do a gallon Ziploc bag where you can put all of it in there, or you can take turns and do a couple different bags where you can put the biscuits inside with this mixture and they can take turns shaking it up. Okay, so now we are ready to put the mixture inside the big gallon bag, and I'm gonna put all of the biscuits inside here too. But I need a helper. Hmm. Wait, I think there's somebody over at the door. Let's see if she wants to come and help. Oh, it's Perry, my neighbor. Hi, Perry. Would you like to come in and help make some monkey bread? Fabulous, come on over. You gonna take your shoes off? Okay. I'll bring a stool over here for you. We're gonna wash our hands first and then you can help me, okay? All right, come climb on up over here. And then I'll get your hand squirt, so so. I'll get some too. And we're gonna wash our hands, make sure they're extra clean before we mix with the monkey bread, okay? All right, you know how to sing your ABCs? All right, let's sing it. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I sing my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? Perfect. All right, here's your paper towel. And I'll dry mine off, and now we're ready to mix up some monkey bread. Okay, so Perry Callis is my little assistant today. She lives next door and she decided to come and help me. So she's got, we put some of these in a smaller bag so it would be easier for her to shake since she's a little bit smaller. So, can, so Perry, can you show us how you can shake it like a monkey? Go ahead and shake it up and down. Good job, very good. Shake it up nice and good. Maybe throw it up in the air. Throw, it, throw the bag up in the air. Woo, there you go. All right, let's check it out and see if it's good. Think they're pretty good? Yeah. Okay, so we've got our first biscuits that are all covered in the cinnamon and sugar. You can add more is that until sugar? this is this is sugar right here. No, no, that's sugar. Right there? No. That? Yeah. Definitely sugar. Mm-hmm. Candy bowl. I always have a candy bowl. So then we're going to add all of the biscuits until we get them all coated just like this. Do you know what this is called? It's called a font pan, and this is the pan we're going to use to make our monkey bread. We're going to spray some cooking spray inside the pan just to keep it from sticking. You don't have to use that, but I like to use it just to keep it from sticking. So, my would you like hair. to spray it in there? That, that's why I got a ponytail if, if my hand gets in there. Um, oh, that's a good idea. Do you want to spray our pan? All right, here we go. Hard. Mm -hmm. Can we help you get it started? Oh, it's definitely working. I'll let you try again. There you go. Spray it all in there. Nice work. I can it tell. It smells gross. <laughs> smells gross. Now we have to take your monkey bread and we're going to put it inside the bun pan. So you can take it piece out like this and stick it inside the pan. You wanna grab them out of here? We're gonna fill all of the biscuits within the bun pan and then we'll be ready to put it in the oven. So the last thing we have to do to make our funky bread is we um, melted six tablespoons of butter in a bowl in the microwave. And this is kind of hot, so this is the part I'm going to do. I'm just that going to green. Yeah, I'm gonna drizzle it over kind of the like, monkey bread. It's kind of like um, kind of like eggs. Kind of looks like eggs, yeah, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, because it has white yeah, and it stuff in there, and and 
and the yo-yo stuff in there. Mm -hmm. So we have it yeah. all inside. What do you think? How does it look? Mm, okay. Can we eat it yet? Mm. Uh, no. Nope. What do we have to do? We have to put it in the oven. So we're going to put it in the oven now. It's set at 350 degrees and we're going to put it in the oven for 20 minutes. All right, I just took the monkey bread out of the oven and you can kind of see what it looks like. I did end up baking it for 30 minutes instead of 20 minutes. I have, um, I had a lot of butter and I thought it needed to bake a little bit longer and sometimes that's what happens when you're cooking. You just check on it and think that you need to bake it a little bit longer. So our monkey bread is ready for eating. I'm going to take some out and send it over to Perry, my neighbor, and enjoy it with her. Thanks for watching. I hope that this encourages you to do your own cooking experiences with your family and have your own family recipe book. Have a great day. Hey JE, Miss Carter here, and I'm coming to you with one of our favorite things from the counseling office, and that is Play-Doh. So some of us may not always have Play-Doh around, but it is one of those things that's really great for calming down. So I have a recipe for you today, and it's super easy. It only has three things in it, and it's super quick to make. So All right, our three ingredients are flour, salt, and water. The first thing we're going to do is put in the flour. Evan, can you help me with that? Yeah. Okay, make sure it's all in there. And then we're going to mix in the... Dang! What is that? Salt. Top. Very good. All right. I'm going to scoot those to the side now, Evan. Woo. Do you want to help me stir? Not yet. I took me back. Oh, you're going to scoot back? Yeah, honey. Okay. Ugh. Okay. We're gonna stir our salt and our flour together. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Do you wanna say hi? No. Okay. All right. Now, Evan, while you stir, can you stir for me? Yeah. No, without you. Oh, you're gonna do, oh, do it without me? Yeah. Okay, while well, you're stirring, I'm gonna scoot you in. Oh, holy. There you go. All right, I'm going to slowly pour in the water and you keep stirring, okay? Okay, stir that in. Good job. I'm baking. Are you baking? Yeah. Oh, yeah, but we're making Play-Doh, remember? Yeah. Okay, keep stirring. Ah. Too what? Oh, uh. Too much water? No. Nope. Can I help you? I try though. Yeah, yeah, that's going to add color to it. Right now, die? Die? Why? Now? So, we keep adding water. Yeah, yeah, Play-Doh now. And Play you want it to have that Play-Doh consistency whenever you finish up here. Now, if it's sticky, if it's too sticky, then you need to add more flour. If it's too dry, you need to add more water. So yeah, yeah dry <clears throat> out. Yeah, no. If it dries out, then we add what, Evan? A lot. Water, yeah. Now. So at some point, you gotta lose the spatula, the spoon, whatever you're using. Wow. Hold on, wait. Oh. What do you want? And you just gotta kind of knead it around like you would Play-Doh. Makes sense, right? Now. Not yet. Aww. I'll train my dad, babe. So, yeah, you can go. I'm dying. So we're just gonna keep kneading and kneading and kneading and then, now you have Play-Doh, enjoy. Hey there, this is Mrs. Boba. And we're gonna stand up and do a little skip counting workout. So skip counting is great for multiplication and for division. So the first we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna skip count by twos. So we're gonna take our feet nice and wide and we're gonna take it into a squat. So we go two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. The next one is we're gonna do some punches for threes. So squat it back down, we're gonna punch it out. So three, 
6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. The next one we're going to do is we're going to take it to fours. So we're going to do jumping jacks for fours. Now I'm going to take it to nice light jumping jacks, but you can take it nice and big if you'd like to. So we're going to go four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40. Next one is we're going to count by fives. So we're going to come to the ground and we're going to take it to some push-ups. Here we go. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. And our last one, we're going to skip count now by tens and I'm going to take it to lunges. So we're going to come out. We're going to go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. And that is your skip counting workout. Thanks guys. Okay, I'm back. I've got another project for you guys. I'm using our cardboard boxes. I think you're gonna like this one too. Um, I've done paper figures. I've done our wonderful um, creations with our cardboard so that we can create sculptures and a whole building set with our own two hands. Um, and now I'm gonna do um, a project where we make some robots. But these are, we're gonna make a basic robot shape. Okay, I have some cardboard here um, and I've got some cardboard pieces. And I'm gonna glue these littler pieces that I've cut. I've cut a head and you can use any shape you like, but I just happen to use squares and rectangles. I've got a body. I'm gonna stick a neck in here too. I think that'll be kind of fun. I've got some legs. I mean some arms and I have some legs for my robot and that's gonna be my basic robot and I'm gonna glue those onto my cardboard and after that's dry I'll show you what we're gonna do next all right we're back I have my cardboard with my shapes glued on it it's dry you have to wait for it to dry I let mine dry overnight because I'm going to be putting paper on top like this I have a some of this old gray paper I've had sitting around in my art studio here at home, but you can use any kind of paper. Copy paper works well. Uh, if you've got an old piece of wrapping paper, you can uh, put that on there with the print side underneath and rub on it. So um, I'm gonna rub with a crayon. And as I rub, I wanna make sure I catch all the edges of my shapes or the vertices. Sometimes that's the fancy word for edges. And the corners. And presto, I have instant robot. But this robot is not complete. It's just a basic robot. So now I'm gonna add details to my robot. Before I do that though, I want you guys to be thinking of a problem that your robot could help solve. For instance, in my family right now, we're doing a lot more cooking. I'm not used to doing this much cooking. We're home a lot, and um, I'm doing a lot more cooking. So I'm wishing that I had a robot that would help me with the cooking. So I added details to make it clear that my robot does that. Maybe you need a robot for a different problem. Maybe you can think of a problem that needs solving, and you could create a robot to help solve it. When I was Doing this robot, I thought I have to have the arm swivel. So I wanted to put a little circle there so that the arm could swivel and move around while the spatula was working to clean up things out of the pan. Um, I put wheels on my robot so it could move around the kitchen smoothly. Um, so think about those details and what are they going to do for your robot and how's it going to make your robot work better. Okay. I hope you've enjoyed some of the things that I've shown you how to make out of old cardboard boxes. 
Um, maybe we can think of some more and I'll put more of those videos up later. Anyway, enjoy. I hope you guys are creating lots of art. Have a great time. Wow, what a wonderful show. I have learned so much. I hope you have too. And you know what? We'll see you back here again tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching today. And it's always a wonderful day to be a tiger. See you next time, boys and girls. <laughs>